Good morning to all of you. We're going to invite you to stand again as we will sing the national anthem. Nkosi Sikelele Africa, God bless Africa. Let's stand together as we sing. Please be seated. The guest of honor, Dr. Dave Weigley, his fellow officer, Mr. Emmanuel Esidiu, Dr. Dave Spencer, chairperson of the College Council and the president of Southern African Union, guest speakers, Pastor Jumara Nechifalani, Pastor Mandla Lupondwana, and Sister Zwanaka Nechifalani. The council members present, Mr. Eric Odindal, also the CFO of SAU, Mrs. Catherine Njekwa, Education Director, and Sister Juba Kuzwayo, Alumni Association President, and also the president of Meals on Wheels. Our government uh, council representative, Councillor Gregory Peck, and the directors from SAU, uh, departmental directors present today, uh, Mrs. Ruth Lehman and Mrs. Sybil Dupree, conferences from the conferences, uh, Pastor. Jablani Mafumulo, the Education Director of TOC, the various pastors from conferences, guests invited from Helderberg and the surrounding areas, the parents and sponsors, faculty and staff, and most important of all, the class of 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me immense pleasure to invite all of you on behalf of the college administration and staff and the council to the graduation ceremony of the class of 2019. Helderberg College of Higher Education has been in existence for 126 years now, and it has been delivering quality values-based education and producing competent graduates for the church and the society. The institution is registered with the Department of Higher Education and Training, and all the qualifications that are offered are accredited by the Council on Higher Education. The college is also regulated and accredited by Adventist Accreditation Association. The programs that are offered at the college are continually benchmarked and, qualification and 
uh, with public universities and sister universities around the world. All the lecturers are well qualified as required by the Council on Higher Education, and 13 of them have master's degrees and another 10 have doctoral degrees. A number of our lecturers have presented research papers at national and international conferences over the last few years. I'm pleased to state that all the three pillars of education, teaching, research, and community engagement are all well covered in the program of Halibur College of Higher Education. This morning we want to express our gratitude and appreciation to the stakeholders, particularly to the parents and to the sponsors, without whom the graduates of the class of 2019 would not be sitting here today. We appreciate your trust and confidence in Adventist institution, in Helderberg College, the only higher education institution of the union, and giving us the privilege to play a small part in the educational journey and success of our graduates. There are also donors amongst us who have supported the college during the last few years and somehow made, made pledges in supporting the vision of the college and we thank you for your contributions. The college is able to carry out its functions effectively and with quality due to the contribution and guidance and involvement of many stakeholders, some of whom are the council members, the college administration, and the staff. This morning, once again, it's my privilege to extend a special welcome to the class of 2019, and this is your day. It is a practice at an occasion like this, we take this opportunity to recognize a staff member who has made this institution proud through his or her personal or professional accomplishments. And each year we do that on this occasion, and it's our happy privilege to recognize one such staff member today. Amidst all the hectic workload and the stress of having to deal with institutional matters, particularly the HR matters, this staff member had the energy and the tenacity to practice for marathons and participated and completed in a number of marathons. She runs approximately 30 marathons a year. On average, each marathon is for 42 kilometers. Some of the popular marathons she completed are the Two Oceans Marathon, seven times she's run it, and the Comrades Marathon, which is 90 kilometers, and she completed this six times. I would like to invite uh, Ms. Wamakushli Nyambe to come forward, and we want to let her know that we are proud of what she has done for the college in her own personal capacity, and uh, we want to say to her, well done, congratulations for keeping the banner of Helderberg high and in the public eye. I'm going to invite her to come forward, please. morning. I'm going to uh, invite you to stand as we sing our opening hymn, To God Be the Glory. You will find it in the back of your program. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
our guest of honor and the commencement speaker comes all the way from North America, Dr. Dave Weigley. Dr. Weigley is the president of Columbian Union Conference situated in Washington, D.C., USA. Since 1997, Dr. Weigley has been serving as a president at various conferences in the North American division. And that makes it 22 years as a president. He served as the president of Washington Conference, the president of Potomac Conference, and an unprecedented third term as the president of Columbia Union Conference. In his capacity as the president of CUC, the Colombian Union Conference, he serves as the chairperson of more than 50 boards or committees, providing visionary and result-oriented leadership in the mid-Atlantic region, which made an indelible mark as evidenced by the growth of the church there. Educational leadership and educational institutions and governance is not new to Dr. Wigley. He serves as the chairperson of the Board of Trustees of Washington Adventist University. And some of us in the audience may know that we have a memorandum of understanding with Washington Adventist University where business graduates of Hellebuck College of Higher Education can pursue a master's degree in business administration at Washington Adventist University by paying only 20% of the tuition fees. And some of our graduates have taken advantage of this. And as a matter of fact, the university has been magnanimous in accommodating some of our psychology graduates as well. Dr. Weigley is a product and a proponent of Adventist education. He has a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Theology from Southern Adventist University, an MBA from City University, Bellevue, Washington, earned in 2005, and he has a PhD degree in Leadership from Andrews University. He is an evangelist at heart and a missionary in the truest sense of the word. His ministry has taken him to several continents and countries in the world. He's traveled to Asia, Africa, Eurasia, and South America. He was the first evangelist to travel to Russia and conduct campaign in, several, in seven different cities when the former USSR was dissolved in 1991. Someone with such accomplishments to his credit and a president of a union in North America, why does one come all the way to the southern tip of Africa and participate in our graduation? Dr. Dave Weigley is a friend of Helderberg College and a friend of Southern Africa Union. This is not his first visit to South Africa or to Helderberg College of Higher Education. His visit is special to us. He's committed to Adventist education. He's very much interested in development of youth of the World Church. As a college, we have been a beneficiary of his missionary spirit and his generosity. Dr. Dr. Dave Weigley has donated funds for the repair of the gymnasium roofing, which happened in the year 2015. And we have also received funds from him to purchase some of the farm equipment that we did in 2018. As you may notice that this year we have been selling firewood and that happened as a result of the two items of farm machinery that we bought, a wood splitter and 
uh, a wood chipper, and we are grateful for the contribution that we have received. Dr. Dave is uh, married to Becky, and they have two children and five grandchildren. Dr. Wagley, we are honored by your visit to our graduation ceremony. We know that you have made sacrifices to be here. You traveled all the way from North America. You even missed the Thanksgiving that is celebrated back home. And we sincerely thank you for taking this time to come over here and address our graduates. At this time, we invite you to deliver the commencement address to the graduating class of 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Dave Wigley. Well, thank you, Dr. and Jenny. I feel very old after that. <laughs> I think maybe I need to take a little break and vacation in this beautiful country before I speak. I came in on Thursday night last week, and um, I'm just now beginning to feel like I'm starting a rest, and now you get up and talk about all that. I feel tired already. <laughs> well, congratulations. Congratulations, first of all, to Heldeberg College Council Member, and of course, Chair Dr. David Spencer. Congratulations, Dr. Vincent and Jetty, and your entire team of wonderful faculty and staff who lead this institution. This is a high day. You all need to feel proud. But most of all, come on. Congratulations, yeah. class of 2019, huh? Woo. Do you feel good? You feel all right? I hope before I get out of here, you do a little, you know, some kind of African, you know, I mean, you got to outdo Rasunga. I was at Rasunga last year, and, you know, they, I, I told the folks back home, I said, you know, if those folks did that in the pegs back home, I might be in trouble to allow dancing like that at the graduation. <laughs> ah, what a proud moment. And mom and dad, and loved ones, are here to support these graduates. You have right to have what I call humble pride. <laughs> or pride, pride humility. I don't know what you want to call it, but pat yourself on the back. You know, young people, graduates today, according to a research I read recently, you are the elite. I mean, you are the elite graduating from a college of higher learning in South Africa, where many, many people aren't able to get this education. You're among the elite. So I congratulate you. We all do. And I want to say that... Um, because you are among the elite, you have a tremendous responsibility. Your blessing of education will be a blessing especially as you bless others for what God has trained and educated you for now. Kofi Annan, past Secretary General of the United Nations and Nobel Peace Prize winner. Now I get to mention him because the CFO is with me from Columbia Union. You understand? He paid the ticket. There he is. Come on, stand up, Emmanuel Seydoux. Emmanuel, two years ago, joined our team as the youngest union treasurer in North America. Cool. Yeah. And if I, if I, I believe I have it right, he, he he matriculated, you might say, from Valley View University to La Sierra University in 2004. Is that correct, Emmanuel? And, and, and uh, it is a long history. In fact, uh, Dr. Vincent, somewhere along the line in presentations here, you need to invite him back and speak. He probably relate better because he's of their age, see? <laughs> But uh, amazing journey of how Emmanuel is now the union treasurer of the third largest union and the finest union in North America, you understand. <laughs> <laughs> Kofi Annan said, knowledge is power, information is liberating, 
and education is the premise of progress for every society and every family. I'm a farm boy. I grew up in Pennsylvania on a dairy farm. I was the youngest of seven children. My mom had no high school education. My dad had a high school education. That was it. My mother's dream, and sister down there in the 60s who graduated with a nursing degree, I heard you yesterday. I see you on the front row. Congratulations to you. I want to tell you, my mother wanted to be a nurse, but she was having too many babies. Every other year, a baby came along. And of those seven children, and then they adopted an eighth child after me, there were four girls and four boys. Every one of those girls became a nurse. Yeah. The youngest, a nurse practitioner. The boys, one became a United States Marine officer, served his country. I rebaptized him back into the church, and then I ordained him as a, as a pastor. He is resting in Jesus because I think some of the things he got in Vietnam, breathing that they call Agent Orange, it was a chemical used to defoliage the jungles, and uh, I think premature cancer got him. But another brother, he duplicated mom and dad. He had eight children. <laughs> and he put them through Christian education. And he has teachers and pastors among that group. The two boys of the original family, one became a physician, family doctor, and the other is me a church pastor and administrator. Education is a huge, makes a huge difference. I applaud you today, young graduates, for the journey you've been on. Now, I've noticed you have some theme, and I'm having a hard time pronouncing exactly how to say this. I've been working on it. Thuma Mina Nokasi? Did I get that? <laughs> Say that right? Okay, I love it. Send Send me, Lord. You know, I, I, I'm going to tell you, you've already been sent. You're here. <laughs> but now I understand you're looking now because commencement is not the end. It's actually the, the beginning. It's the beginning of your journey of service into the world and into society. And who knows where God will take you. If you told me on my graduation day, now, well, from college, it's not 50 years, probably 40 some years ago. Uh, if you told me where I would have traveled and what I have done and, and, and all of that, I would have said, no way, I don't have that much motivation. But God is amazing in our lives, isn't he? God is amazing. Um, I, I just love to, be, I love to be among winners. And I know today I'm among winners. I, I know in more than one way, this whole, uh, you know, audience, whatever your congregation, uh, graduation, service, whatever, you're all celebrating, you got to be, because South America won the rugby again this year, the World Cup, amen? <laughs> and of course, I love the Invictus story of 1995. I love to be among winners. Um, in, in, in our capital, we have a winner, it's called the uh, Washington Nationals. We won the World Series this year. I love to be among winners. So I posted on my Facebook. You know Facebook down here, you know? A few of you have a, Okay, all right. Well, I've been told by Dr. Spencer I need to get up with WhatsApp because I don't have WhatsApp. Are you not with WhatsApp? I said, uh, yeah, I used to be. Well, what, what's with WhatsApp? Well, that's the way we communicate down here. Well, we communicate with Facebook up there. <laughs> And so I put up on Facebook that I uh, congratulated the Washington Nationals for winning the World Series. A Cinderella story. They should have never won, they, but they won the World Series. So I put up online on my Facebook, remember, one, and what, remember when, and I, I posted the video of me singing the United States National Anthem at their ball game in June of 2015. I don't know how I did that, but I did it. So now I want to congratulate them that they had won the World Series, and, 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 and everybody thinks I sang the national anthem at the World Series. 
I'm saying, what? No, no, I sang in 2015 in a, in a game in Washington, D.C. when they played the Blue Jays. But on Facebook, they didn't tell the date and time, so I'm getting all this, oh, man, Dave, you, won, you sang at the World Series. And I said, well, I like to be among winners. I want to tell you right now today, that was a wonderful time, but I feel higher today. I'm up even higher because I'm with the class of 2019. These classes, winners. You guys are winners. You, you, you really are. The incredible journey it is to, to, to get to this point is huge. So congratulations again. I want to talk to you this morning for just a few moments. I realized a long time ago for something to be immortal in speaking, it doesn't have to be eternal. Just a, few words, just a few words about three things from the life of Joseph. I'm enamored with many, many Bible characters, as I'm sure you are. And you might think of this as a sermon more than a commencement address, but you are a faith-based institution, and I make no apologies. Joseph, one of the greatest characters of Scripture, one that I wish I could emulate, <clears throat> has three things I want to share with you. Joseph was a dreamer. And the problem was, he started sharing his dreams. And his family became very concerned. First, his brothers thought he was just simply, just simply an egotist. I saw, the, you know, sheaves bowing down. I saw the sun, moon, and stars bowing down. And, and, and the brothers didn't, didn't enjoy it too much. But when he told mom and dad that he saw the sun, moon, and stars bowing down, I shouldn't say dad, mom, but more dad, because mom had passed away. When he told dad that, dad said, you got a problem, son. Your dreams aren't realistic. Hmm. But you know, God was setting Joseph up for something that was going to be his life's journey. He didn't know it at the time, but was, God was getting ready to send him somewhere. God was preparing him for a wonderful life of service. He didn't know that. And his dream was centered around how God would communicate back then their life. And dreams were very much a part of what they did and how they understood life. And it is with us today, we have dreams. We call them visions. We talk about our life and what we want to do with it. And the people who go places are dreamers. They vision, they think, they wonder, they plan, they pray. And, 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 and God honors that vision. Now, sometimes the vision gets a little bit out of hand because people start thinking about, well, I get my BA, and then I get my MBA, and then I get my BMW. And they say, you know, I got my life all figured out. Well, there's nothing wrong with BMWs. That's the dream that uh, Emmanuel has. He wants to get a BMW one day. Good cars. Nothing wrong with having nice things. I mean, look at Abraham. He was very wealthy. God blesses us. If we serve God, he blesses us. He says, serve me first, and I'll take care of the rest of the things. But put him first. But if you get the things ahead of him, something goes wrong. There is nothing like a life of purpose. A life of purpose is where God wants us to be. I was a young pastor just beginning my ministry. I got invited one day to play a game of golf. I know you have that down here because I know Ernie L. All right. So, you know, and other, other golfers. I, but anyway, I was out there on a Sunday morning like this in a December day back in Florida. My wife and I were recently married in the summer, and I went out with these doctors. I was a young pastor in this large church, and these doctors invited me out to play. <clears throat> we're getting out there. <clears throat> Excuse me on the first tee. <clears throat> Excuse me, the doctor says, uh, this is so-and-so, and this doctor so-and-so are getting introduced. Well, they wanted to fill up the foursome. They play foursome on a busy Sunday morning. We want to put another guy with you. So another guy joined us. This guy we, we um, didn't know, but he got put with us. He, he was an executive with Southern Bell. Thank you. Uh, he, he was probably about my age, and I was probably about your age, graduates. Not too far beyond some of you. Recently out of my ministerial training, and recently married. Thank you. And anyway... We get out there in the first tee, and pretty soon, you know, um, getting introduced, introduced, and then the doctor said, you're going to ride with him. I said, okay. So I rode along. His name was John. And John, just, we carried on a conversation. Now he said, preacher, you're a preacher, right? I said, yeah, I'm a preacher. He says, you're going to have to close your ears today. I said, what? You have to close your ears today. And I realized what he meant after he hit a few golf balls, and the golf ball didn't go the right way. He said a few words, <laughs> words that I wouldn't say as a preacher, and you wouldn't say as a Christian. So we played nine holes. Usually people at nine holes get a soft drink, get something, you know, to refresh themselves some way. And then we play the last nine holes. In that time, in the morning, he's not getting a soft drink. He's getting a Bloody Mary. That's his hard drink. 
Now his golf ball in the second nine holes are going everywhere. He comes about hole number 16, we're close, and he says, you know, I've been watching you, preacher. He said, you know what, you need a new pair of golf shoes. I said, what? He says, what size do you take? And I told him, yeah, it's too bad I have a pair I don't use in my garage I'd give to you. I said, um, I don't need a pair of shoes. Just leave me. It's okay. It's so cool. It's all right. Well, the short of this story was he bought me a pair of golf shoes out of nowhere. I carried those back home to my wife, and I said, honey, look, I bought myself a Christmas present. Oh, <laughs> we had one of our first good conversations. Then I told her what happened, and I said, we cannot let this go. We cannot let this go. We have to do something, because this doesn't happen every day. This man gives me a pair of shawl, buys a, you know, expensive pair of golf shoes. So what did we do? He made up a plate of cookies. We showed up this guy's house on Christmas Eve. We knocked and rang the doorbell. I wonder if he would recognize me. He comes to the door, and he says, ready, oh, preacher, come on in. And I realized then that John was celebrating Christmas like alcoholics do. He had a few drinks in him. He brought me in, sat me down. I met his wife, my wife, we visited together. And then he took me on a tour of his house. I went this way and that way. He says, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you that. He showed me his beautiful home. He showed me things that just only a lot of money could buy. And then he sat me in a room away from those where the ladies were visiting. And he said, let me, t preacher, I'm going to tell you something. I have a question for you. I am not a happy man. Tell me, what does it take to have happiness? Whew, I couldn't believe my ears. What would you say, theology student, graduate? What would you say? You need somebody in your life, right? And I said, you need Jesus in your life. And right there, I said, he said, I, 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 I hear you. And I said, and listen, let me tell you, what you need to do is do some Bible studies. I should have led him to Jesus that night. But I did not. I said, what you need to do is understand the Bible and Jesus, and, and I'll be happy to give you some Bible studies. He said, I want that. I want that. I said, John, listen, you, you're a little bit inebriated. Are you sure? You know what you, I know what I'm saying. I want that more than anything. I said, oh, well, I'm going out of town for the holidays. When I get back in town, I'll call you. Call me. I'd love to do this. Well, I went out, down to my wife's folks, came back in town, and John called him up. Well, preacher, I'm kind of busy. I never had the privilege of leading John to Jesus, but he told me something over and over and over again I see in my life. Happiness comes with purpose and not with things. Happiness comes in service and not in selfishness. Somebody once said, self-serving is self-destruction, but self-sacrifice is self-preservation. You're dreamers. God has given you a dream to come here, but now what you do with your life is even going to be more fantastic because you're going to link up with the Lord even more, and God is going to do great things through, through you if you trust Him. Ellen White once said, it's not the capabilities you now possess or ever will that have that will give you success. It's that which the Lord can do for you. We need to have far less confidence in what man can do and far more confidence in what God can do for every believing soul. He longs to have you reach out after him by faith. He longs, I want to say it again, he longs to have you expect great things. Amen. So dream, young people. Yeah, you're dreaming. That's why you're here. But as you go out, don't let some of the challenges you have where your dreams aren't totally fulfilled. Maybe you don't have a call for the ministry and you're a theology grad. Don't stop. If you're called, God's going to find you a place to serve. It may not be exactly where you think, because when you look at the story of Joseph, Joseph was sent somewhere he didn't want to go. You know the story of Joseph. He went down to visit his brothers there in Dothan, and they threw him in the pit. And pretty soon he's off to the journey down into Egypt. He didn't know what was going on, and for a while he was terrified. He was on God's mission, though. God was sending him to Egypt. He didn't know why then. It was a dark journey, but there on that little camel, or maybe he was walking behind, I don't know where it was, but somewhere in the heart, he decided his father's God was going to be his God. And he was going to trust God to take him all the way through whatever he was experiencing as a slave. And you know the story of Joseph. You know he got down there into Egypt, and pretty soon Potiphar bought him and made him a slave in his house, and soon Joseph became the steward of Potiphar's house. You know the story. And then he becomes the top steward, and Potiphar trusted him with everything but his wife. 
but his wife wanted Joseph. I'll tell you something, when the hormones are flowing and a young pretty woman asks a young pretty good, good handsome guy to do something, it's pretty hard to say no when you're alone. But Joseph, Joseph had been educated. Not with just the principles of truths of his day, he was educated with the word of God. And not only was he educated with the word of God, he had God in his heart. Joseph demonstrated character. Character, somebody once said, is what you do when nobody's watching. Hmm. I think it also is when people's watching too, but we know what it means. Under the inspecting eye of God and holy angels, many take liberties of which they would not be guilty in the presence of their fellow man. But Joseph's first thought was of God. How can I do this? Great wickedness and sin against God. And let me tell you, if Joseph had yielded and had given in, he would not have the same future that he had. Now, I'm not saying when we make mistakes, and we all do, we're all human, we're all sinners, we all fall in along the way, and God redeems us, and He saves us, and God puts our feet back on the road. The Bible says in Proverbs, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets up. And God's ready to forgive because His mercy is greater than anything. No matter what we've done, He has a way of finding a way to get us back on the trail. But Joseph's life would have been different. We know that he would have had a different, different situation you know, Joseph had tremendous character. I've done a few little papers and research on leadership. When you go through an Andrews program like we went through, we had a few papers to write. A lot of papers to write. A lot of work. But one book I ran across was a book called The Leadership Challenge by his two Santa Clara scholars, professors, Santa Clara, California, I think the book is now in its fifth edition, Leadership Challenge. And they talk about what people look for in leaders. You're all leaders, graduates. You're leading your own way. And you're going to lead even more when you get out of this place and get jobs. You'll lead. What do people look for in leaders? They did surveys around the world. And then, like I say, they're in their fifth edition and they keep doing this. They keep coming up pretty much the same results. What do people look for in leaders? They came up with three or four top things people look in leaders. Then they had a list of 30 or so, but the top three or four, I talked about top three. Number one, look for competence, of course. They look for, that's not number one, that's one of the three. It's like third on the list. Second is forward looking, visioner. You can vision the future. You can see it. You talk about it. The leader has has said, the one who sees the horizon, he sees the vista. She sees the vista first. And then she says to her followers, come up here. I want you to show you something. That's the leader. They they, they envision it. They see it. And then they want to tell others, look what I see. Hey, look, can you see this? They define the future. Uh, That's forward looking. But the number one, the number one characteristic that people look for in their leader is integrity. Joseph had integrity. That's why God could take him and keep promoting him and promoting him and promoting him because he had integrity. But he also, when he went to that prison and went down into that surroundings of that terrible dungeon for what he did not do, accused wrongly, sent into that very pit Second time in the pit. First time he goes to see his brothers, his brothers throw him in the pit. Now he's down there in Egypt doing a great job. He's working hard. He's really excelling. He's living up to principle. And next thing you know, for saying no to sin, he's back in the pit. His surroundings may have been miserable, but I'll tell you something that wasn't. And that was his heart. Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. He was at peace. Mm. Edwin Friedman wrote, leadership intrinsically includes sabotage of the courageous leader. The leader hasn't led until he or she survives sabotage. Hmm. We can be accused wrongly. I've felt that a few times. But in the end, Joseph with Victor. 
Oh, you know the story. You know how he was victor. His brothers come in there looking for food because there's a famine in the land. And Joseph sees them come in. He recognized these shepherds right away. Pharaoh had, had the dream. You know, he gets out of prison, you know, and he's there as the, now the second in command of Egypt. And here come his brother looking for this food. And, and can you imagine you're sitting there? You know them, but they don't know you. And then the rush of emotion of seeing your brothers for we don't know exactly how many years. It could have been decades, you know. But they didn't recognize him for sure, and they couldn't imagine where he was. But the, 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 the drama all plays out until there Joseph is. Hmm. There he is. Oh, I got to read it. Hmm. His brothers are there, and this is the final, the kind of the pinnacle of the story. He's with his brothers. He's sent the Egyptians out of the room. And Joseph wept aloud. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father yet live? And Joseph said to his brothers, please come near. I mean, they're freaking out. Excuse the expression, but they are. We've come here to get grain from this guy, and we thought all along one of us is going to become prisoners because you know how it all worked out with the silver cup. And we thought, Benjamin, we're going to lose Benjamin, and, and, the, and the brothers are coming forward. No, take me, take me. Don't leave, 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 take, we want Benjamin to go home. Take, take them, take me. That's the exact, exact opposite of what they were years, decades before when they threw him in the pit. <laughs> Joseph says, come near. I am Joseph, your brother who you sold into slavery. Now watch this. Oh, graduates, watch this. But now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. God sent me to preserve life. You graduates are going out to make a difference in the world and you are going to preserve life because we all work in the stead of Joseph because Joseph works in the stead of Christ. He is a type of Jesus and we are the fulfillment of Jesus' presence on the earth. Are you with me? Mm. Yes. The story is told of David Livingston. I was in Livingston, Zambia, earlier, well, I guess it's last week, and I visited the David Livingston Museum for the first time. Powerful experience, but I knew about that life. I read about it. I've been to Westminster Abbey, standing over the grave of David Livingston. The story of a man who graduated from medical school, became an explorer, but also a medical doctor, and he could have practiced medicine right there in London, but he chose to go to Africa and work as many years in Africa. And in 1873, when he died, they took his heart out of his body and they buried it in the soil of Africa. They then bore out a tree and put it in his body in a tree. They carried it to the coast and then it was taken back to England so he might receive a recognized burial in the right way and honor this man who had given his life, given his life to preserve life. You graduates, you are that type of graduate because you are called to preserve life, to go forth, to make a difference in this world. There's a story told. I heard it many years ago that when Livingston's carriage was coming through, or not I said the carriage, but the funeral procession and the cart carrying Livingston's body came. There was a press of the crowd and people wanted to pay respects. And in that crowd was a bum, an old man who nobody wanted around, unshaven, had the taste, had the smell of liquor and alcohol in his breath, who said, please, please stand aside. And, and there was just one more person and then finally, the person was still blocking his vote. He said to him, as the, car, as, the, as the procession was coming, he said to the man, won't you please stand aside that I might pay respects to my college roommate? One life of service, one life of selfishness. Dreamers, people who will dream, Graduates who will have hard times, 
but graduates who will be victors. Sent by God to make a huge difference in this world of need. May God bless you. Dr. Wiley, I would like to express our appreciation to you on behalf of Elderberg College of Higher Education for the words you have spoken. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Yeah. This is what we practiced for. Yes. Yeah. Chairman of Helderberg College Council, Dr. Dave Spencer. Secretary of Helderberg College Council, Dr. Vincent Njeti. As the Registrar of Helderberg College of Higher Education, I am pleased to introduce to you 56 candidates who have completed all the requirements of their various programs as prescribed by Helderberg College of Higher Education. This is the 16th year that Helderberg College is conferring degrees based on its registration with the Department of Higher Education and Training, the accreditation by the Council on Higher Education, and the registration of the degrees on the National Qualifications Framework by the South African Qualifications Authority. With regard to the class of 2019, as the registrar of this institution, I hereby verify that the students have fulfilled all the academic requirements of their relevant programs. We checked this morning. <laughs> Chairman of Helderberg College Council, there are 19 candidates from the faculty of, the of theology, 12 from the Faculty of Arts, and 25 from the Faculty of Business. With this 93rd graduation ceremony on this campus, the 56 candidates will join the 2,955 that graduated from Helderberg College over the past 89 years, making a total of 3,011. They will also join the 31 from Union College and 32 from Spionkop College, the two predecessors of Helderberg College, now making a grand total of 3,074. By virtue of the authority vested in me as chairman of Helderberg College Council, I hereby declare that the candidates presenting themselves before this convocation today have satisfactorily completed all the requirements of their respective programs as determined by the college and accredited by the Council on Higher Education and the Adventist Accrediting Association. I call upon the registrar to invite the candidates to present themselves. I now call upon the certificate candidates from the Faculty of Business to please come forward. <laughs> Higher Certificate in Office Management. Knox Dubé.
congratulations, Emily. Asisipo Tusa in absentia. I declare their graduation in absentia. Non cosi Bridget Hem. Congratulations. Tania Teresa Yechels. Marlene Jocelyn Cecilia Euster. visiting speaker, Dr. Wiley, the oldest graduate that I've ever called to the podium. <laughs> yeah. Candace Lotteran, not finished yet, with distinction. Yeah. Congratulations, Candace. <laughs> Elni Nelmery Miles. No problem, congratulations. Kanyilim Napi. Abigail Mary Moodley with distinction in absentia. I declare her graduation in absentia. Joshua David Souter. <laughs> Congratulations, Dave. <laughs> But have a problem if you're short. <laughs> Alicia Vena. Congratulations. Sian Alvani in absentia. I declare her graduation in absentia. Shlumelo Yali. <laughs> Congratulations.
I now call upon the diploma candidate from the Faculty of Business to please come forward. Diploma in Business Management, Marketing. I would like to tell our audience that this student is a, it's a, especially a privilege to call her up because she has shown that she can endure through many difficult times and trials. Here she is today, receiving her diploma, Butle Benkosi, Laura Mshlobane. Well done, Laura. I now call upon the degree candidates from the Faculty of Business to please come forward. Bachelor of Commerce Accounting. This is not the easiest qualification to obtain. As can be seen, we have only one graduate, Petra Ndivo Nkomo. Thank you. She was also the treasurer of the graduating class. Bachelor of Business Administration Management. Chairman of Helderberg College Council, it is the hope of every registrar that once in his working lifetime he will be able to call to the podium a student graduating as the best of the best of the very best. A student graduating not only at the top of her class but at the top of the graduating class. A student, a student graduating above 90% cumulative average. Summa cum laude, Yalenga Agnes Shirambo.
Ntabaleng Cornelia Dube. Danao Doreen Hammer. Congratulations. Dorcas Nolita Heleve. <laughs> Ahonke Siam Tanda Ho Ho. No, you might not. <laughs> Violeto Holland. <laughs> Tadi Wanashe Daniela Kahia. Alistair Piri. Sonwa Bile Sitwell Sihea. Congratulations. <laughs> Muano Sitaho. Cum laude.
now call upon the degree candidates from the Faculty of Arts to please come forward. Mr. Shop. Now I, let me say that later. Bachelor of Arts in Communication. Now, I, before I call up this next candidate, I leaned over to the lecturer here and uh, I s asked her, you know, was she quiet in class? She said she never stopped talking all the time. <laughs> you couldn't keep her quiet. Well, it paid off. Kaylee Catherine Abrams, magna cum laude. <laughs> Above 83 to 90% cumulative average. To Letu Nkikela, cum laude. Well done, to Letu. Richard Nava Ngenda. Well done. Ayanda Nontikelelo Khashe. Well done. I want to tell you a little bit about the next candidate. She, has, she was waiting to register by my office and I was walking past her and her grandmother was sitting next to her. She had gray hair, streaky, punk, I thought, as I walked past to my office. But there was something I never forgot. She had sparkle in her eyes. Even that day, even if you look at their photo today, you will see the sparkle in her eyes. And today, her grandmother is here, all the way from Qatar, other side of Dubai. And her parents are here today to see her graduate. Not only that. <laughs> the next time I was looking for her, I was looking for the gray hair. Her hair was purple and green. <laughs> and then it was pink and blue. Or all the colors of the rainbow. But I want to tell you something, audience and distinguished guests. Helderberg College makes a difference. How she has matured. It is a long time since I have seen Ashlyn Clare with different color hair. Today, here is a beautiful young woman. Red, and how she's making me eat my words. Graduating cum laude, <laughs> Ashlyn Claire Starr.
I've always considered some graduates to be specially gifted for their profession. And that is how I have always viewed psychology. It takes a special type of student to go into that specific field of speciality. Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. And if you excel in this profession, it says a lot. Sibonella, Palmira, Makato, Cum Laude. Congratulations. <laughs> Di Makazzo Nelly Matebane. Well done. Now the next candidate was the secretary of the graduating class and what a secretary she was. If you're looking for a good secretary, here she is. Sipeshishle no masontom planga. Don Jesu Ngalande. Did I? Thank you. Tandol way to Ndabeni. Sabesu Silumesi. Bronwyn Samson Fasahi. Well done, Bronwyn. God bless. <laughs> I will now call upon the degree candidates from the Faculty of Theology to please come forward. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Theology.
There is one thing that I will always remember about Louis Berger. Sometimes life can turn a harsh way towards you, but he just never gave up. Louis Berger, Bachelor of Arts in Theology. Loisy knowledge to bear. I beg your pardon. Mondli Londani Tladla. Well done. Copano Lebele. Well done, Copano. Well done, The next candidate was also the pastor of the graduating class. And amongst all of that busyness, Yoshin Ashley Leonard Cum Laude. And the big man that I'm going to call up now is also the quietest man that you can think about until he steps into the pulpit. And then you can listen to him. Grant Ivor Lotteren, magna cum laude. And for the next candidate, I just can't believe that four years have gone by. Elrico Lowe. <laughs> Congratulations, Elrico. <laughs> Marshall Pascal and Lowe. Well done.
Sultan Mashishi. What a privilege. God bless you. Dumisani Tulani Innocent Matenjwa. Well done. Sampiwe Satini Mbokasi. Cum laude. Lebohang Gavin Madupe. Well done. Tandu Lungelu Zef Mkachwa. Cum laude. Well done. Well done. Kuyisila Christopher Nkina. The next candidate was also the president of our graduating class, a big man, understands leadership, Talent Moyo. Well done, Talent. God bless you. Tunzi Joseph Pani. Well done, Mtunzi. God bless you, my friend. <laughs> Sepo Tai. Well done. I almost feel like making Andy Siwe standing there for a while. Andy Siwe Tebe. It is a privilege. It is a privilege. <laughs> hey. 
Sometimes when we are older and we come to study, it's harder, it's tougher. And the one thing that I remember clearly about jo David Johannes Wilshot is that he never gave up. He just kept going. David Johannes Wilshot, Bachelor of Arts in Theology. Now, I am required to say the following. On behalf of the Helderberg College family, I would like to, now that sounds terrible. And if you preach and you do that sort of thing, everybody sleeps. So you know what I really want to say to you guys? It was fantastic to have had you here. And in the words of Paul, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. It is now my privilege to announce and present the Awards of Excellence for the class of 2019. Through his participation in spiritual activities, for his faithfulness and exemplary behavior, and having made a noteworthy contribution at Helderberg College of Higher Education, the Spiritus Award goes to Sempiwe Mbukaza. Faithful and reliable involvement in college activities, her industrious participation in the work opportunities on campus, and having made a noteworthy contribution at Helderberg College of Higher Education, the Laboris Award goes to Tuletu Mkikela. Congratulations to Lita. <laughs> Having achieved the highest cumulative average of the senior class 2019 of Helderberg College of Higher Education, with a percentage of 92%, the Studio Award goes to Yalenga Chirambo.
The following award is not presented every year. However, this year, through academic excellence, exceptional leadership skills, commendable citizenship, a positive influence, spiritual and overall leadership, and having made a noteworthy contribution at Helderberg College of Higher Education, the Ductus Award is therefore awarded to Grant Lottery. <laughs> The next item on the program is a charge to the graduates. The president's charge to the graduates to the class of 2019. This is the last institutional location for giving advice to our students. I'm sure all throughout your three or four years uh, that you have been here, you have been receiving advice from our staff, from our lecturers, from the faculty dean, but this is our last chance to say something to you, and all that we want to say to you will be said now. Today, the 1st of December 2019, signifies a significant change in your life, from that of a student to a graduate. And you are in a fortunate position as a holder of a certificate or a degree or a diploma, and it comes with certain rights and responsibilities. And it is esteemed on this commencement day that I charge you with the responsibilities that accompany this distinction and the privilege of receiving an education and a degree from Helderberg College of Higher Education. Like any other Adventist university or college, we are intentional in providing you values-based education, values that are based on a biblical worldview and Seventh-day Adventist educational philosophy. We are intentional in stating it even in our mission statement as it reads as follows. We deliver quality values-based higher education based on the Seventh-day Adventist educational philosophy to produce competent graduates. We want students who go through the portals of this institution and graduate not only have competencies that are required for the job market, but they also have values. And as the Adventist philosophy of education states, Adventist education imparts more than academic knowledge. It fosters a balanced development of the whole person. It seeks to develop a life of faith in God and respect for dignity of all human beings. And that is our desire for you, that you carry on these values. How, and how important it is to train a person holistically and to have faith in God and to have ethics and values among our graduates. The other day I was uh, reading in a newspaper a letter written by a parent, a dissatisfied or a concerned parent, talking about the lack of values among teachers and uh, referring to the education sector. And not just the education sector, but every other sector in the economy, how values are lacking and how people are cheating and, and dishonesty and so on. But the question is, how many institutions of higher learning emphasize on ethics and values? And on the contrary, society insists on a values-free education. Years ago, someone has written this piece which shows how deprived 
our society will be without values and try to narrate how the world has changed from many years past. And this is what someone has said. First, carriages were horseless, then bicycles were chainless. New motor roads were dustless and our transport effortless. Soon oranges were seedless and our cookery was fireless. Our food fatless and our coffee caffeineless. Our phones cordless and our internet wireless. Our education valuesless and our society godless. A valuesless education results in a godless society where right can no more be right and wrong can no more be wrong. It all depends on what your one's conscience is and, what, and how one looks at it from their perspective. Earthly passions and corrupt thoughts and evil desires will take possession of the mind without values and God in our lives. So I charge you to live by the values that you were taught at Hellebor College of Higher Education. Not only values that you were taught, but the values that you caught as you spent the last few years here. We, the staff and the administration of this institution, have served you at Helderberg, will, great, will gain our greatest sense of fulfillment and satisfaction in knowing that you live up to the values and principles and faith in God. I charge you this day, as you join this august body of graduates of this college, to live your life by, by the following three timeless values. Number one, integrity. I think our commencement speaker also, Dr. Weigley, mentioned that the first and foremost quality that is needed among leaders, as described in the book, The Leadership Challenge, which I'm sure and I want to get a copy of, is integrity. It is the quality of being upright and living by a principle, standing for a principle. Most often we stand for others' rights, others' freedom, and others' constitutional rights, which is good. And we stand for our own rights, which is also good. However, when will we stand for a principle? When will we say, this is unethical, I will not do it? And this is unethical, and this is wrong. In the words of Ellen White, the world needs men and women who will not be bought or sold. Men and women who in their, in their inmost souls are true and honest. Men and women who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Men and women whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle to the pole. Men and women who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. I charge you to be men and women of integrity. The second one is honesty. Honesty refers to being trustworthy, loyal, and sincere. It is a dimension of moral character that connotes attributes such as truthfulness and straightforwardness, including straightforwardness of conduct, along with the absence of lying and cheating. It is truth living and truth loving. It is choosing not to cheat or deceive in any way. The Bible says in Proverbs, ill-gotten gains do not profit anything, but righteousness delivers from death. Be honest at your workplace with your colleagues. Be honest with your employers, with your family, with your spouse. And employers are looking for people with honesty in their dealings. I charge you this morning to be honest. And the last one, number three, be lifelong learners and thought leaders. Adventist education is not all about just ethics and values, but also ensuring that its graduates are competent and growing and, uh, and contributing to the world of knowledge. An American politician by the name Newton Baker once said, the man or woman who graduates today and stops learning tomorrow is uneducated the day after. Many of today's skills won't match 
tomorrow's jobs. According to the International Labour Organization, lifelong learning, learning is the only way to meet the challenges that are presented by technological advances and the global mega trends that we see today. A lifelong learner is, one, is someone who is committed to continuously learning and filling the gaps that are missing in their personal development. It is an ongoing voluntary pursuit. Note the word voluntary. No teacher or no lecturer is going to ask you to do a certain task in order to gain knowledge. It's a voluntary pursuit of knowledge for personal and professional reasons. It enhances not only personal development, but also your self-sustainability and employability and competitiveness. You have commenced a learning process and you have demonstrated by fulfilling all the requirements of graduation. You have engaged in reading, researching, assimilating, analyzing, and recommending solutions to problems in your chosen field of study. And this process must continue. Continue to invest in learning and education. Ellen White said, it is the work of true education and uh, it's the work of true education to develop this power, to train the youth to be thinkers and not mere reflectors of other people's thoughts. We all have gone through this policy or process sometime or the other of plagiarism. We can't always be reflecting other people's thought. Take time to contemplate and we are challenged to be original thinkers and to be intellectuals. Ellen White challenges us to be intellectuals and not just intelligent. And there's a difference between intel intellectual and an intelligent person. Intellectual refers to one who can think and one who comes up with new paradigms, discusses new ideas and creative ways to find solution to problems. But intelligence is the capacity of the mind to, to, uh, to learn quickly, to understand principles and to acquire knowledge. And even machines can do that and hence the concept of artificial intelligence. But we don't have artificial intellectuals and God had endowed us this power that is akin to that of creator, that he has given us the potential to be thinkers and I charge you to be lifelong learners and thought leaders. In conclusion, we honor you today as the esteemed sons and daughters of Heldover College of Higher Education. This institution sends you to represent the worthy ideals your alma mater stands for and to serve humanity wherever you will be needed. This institution has produced men and women of great minds and profound thinkers and tall leaders and dedicated workers in various fields and you follow their footsteps. They have produced a legacy of excellence, dedicated service and success. We are proud of the graduates of this institution and it is your turn to carry on this legacy and leave a legacy for the future graduates of this time. To Mamina Nkosi, God bless you all. the chairman of council, the president of the college, my counterpart, <laughs> the president of the alumni association, our honored guest, the graduating class of 29, I refer them as Tim Tuma Minangosi, oh, yes. faculty and staff, 
Ladies and gentlemen, parents, spouses, girlfriends and boyfriends. And I know that they are boys and girls too. I stand on behalf of the graduation class of 2019 to affirm that indeed the college has delivered quality, values-based higher education in our various disciplines based on the Seventh-day Adventist education philosophy and produced and expected to be competent pool of graduates. Today we are honored to be associated with this institution. As we leave the hallowed halls of Helderberg, we are not leaving. We stand to be proud ambassadors of the Helderberg College of Higher Education. We take cognizance of the rich heritage it possesses and therefore commit ourselves to upholding the name of our alma mater. Mr. President, you mentioned uh, three important aspects in your charge, which I want to remind ourselves, integrity, honesty, and also being long life learners and thought leaders. We came here seeking knowledge as we saw the potential for change that could be effected in our society. Our own fears and limitations were conquered and today stand to take our new challenges with confidence drawn from the knowledge, values, and principles imbibed at the feet of our professors and mentors enabling us to enter the marketplace to make a difference. As alumni, we pledge our support to the institution, promising to positively promote the college wherever we can, in whichever way we can, to whomever we can. We will seek ways as far as our productivity allows to support the different projects of the Alumni Association and the college so that the students on our footprints may benefit for a much improved Helderberg College of Higher Education. To my colleagues, I say hail Helderberg. I thank you. I would like at this present moment, before I read my charge to the alumni, our newest alumni of 2019, I would like to call on all alumni of Holderberg College present here today to stand. I want the graduating class of 2019 to see the community of alumni that they'll be joining. Give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. You may sit down. Thank you so much. Can I now ask the newest alumna, the graduating class of 2019, to kindly stand as I read this short charge to them.
the chairman of the council, the president of the college, honored guests, faculty and staff, ladies and gentlemen, to the members of class of the class of 2019. For the past one, two, three, four or more years, this institution has become your place of dwelling, your home, a source of knowledge, wisdom, and character development. You have obtained life skills, job-related competences. You have been tested, tried, and now finally qualified. Congratulations and praise be to God from whom all blessings flow. The time has come for you to leave the hallowed halls of Helderberg College of Higher Education as its newest alumni. Going into a world full of opportunities, possibilities, and also challenges. Challenges of unemployment, poverty, HIV and AIDS, gender-based violence, inequality, xenophobia, climate change, and the list goes on. Take advantage of the opportunities and carry with you a sense of responsibility to make a difference. Remembering the words in 1 Peter 2 verse 9, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim his praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. As alumni, I charge you to go forth with God, carrying with you a deep consciousness of his presence, and be proud ambassadors of this institution. May you take cognizance of the heritage it espouses and the values it possesses, and commit yourself to upholding the name of your alma mater. Take up the challenges life may bring, using the knowledge, skills, values, principles instilled by your professors and mentors to the best of your ability. Always strive to conduct yourselves with honesty, integrity, taking responsibility of your actions and respecting the rights, opinions, and dignity of all people. I must caution you, there is a danger in intellectualism. Knowledge, even knowledge about God, can be destructive when it tends into an end rather than a means to an end. It can become an idol, something which is revered rather than the God of truth. Knowledge can be used as power for either achieving good or evil. It can lead to pride, self-sufficiency, and bigotry. Remember in the words of Ellen White, the world needs informed men, but more than that, it needs men and women of integrity, of noble character, whose ability is controlled by steadfast principle. I charge you to endeavor to serve and improve your communities and society and to make a difference. In the words of Ellen G. White, true education means more than the pursuit of certain course of study. It is about the joy of service in this world and in the world to come. Use your education to serve and improve your communities and make a difference. Finally, as alumni, I exhort you to pledge support to this institution, promising to positively contribute and to promote the college wherever you can, in whichever way you can, to whomever you can. At all times, seek ways to support the different projects of the Alumni Association and the college, and in so doing, affording the students who will come after you the best Helderberg experience. Hail Helderberg. Graduates, please respond by saying Hail Helderberg three times. Hail Helderberg, Hail Helderberg, Hail Helderberg. I thank you. Just sat down, but I invite you to stand for our final song together, the college song. Would you stand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
remain standing for our benediction. Let's pray together. Father, if there is any glory to be derived from this program, or from the awards given, or the honors distributed, if there is any glory, let it go to Calvary. And Father, as our graduating students will be leaving this campus. Going through the gate, I pray Lord that they will turn and look at the mountain. And remember Helderbeck Mountain and Helderbeck College. We know that they will be facing other new mountains. I pray Lord, as they conquered this mountain, give them an assurance to conquer other mountains. Because they have offered to be sent of you. And they've made a pledge, Lord. They are saying, Tumamin and Kosi. And because of that, put your name on them. Put a hedge around them. Protect them. And keep them faithful. Keep them working. And keep them waiting for you soon coming. Until then, Lord, bless us and keep us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <laughs>